بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم بنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Without a doubt, the entire month of Ramadan is a blessed time and it is a mercy upon the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is related to the days of Ramadan as well as the nights of Ramadan. And from the month of Ramadan, we have the best 10 nights of the year and that is the last 10 nights of Ramadan as these last 10 nights of Ramadan this is a time in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would exert himself and strive more than he strove or exerted himself throughout the entire month and this comes in the narration of Aisha radiallahu anha qalat kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yajtahid fil ashir al awakhir ma la yajtahid fi ghayrihi Aisha radiallahu anha she mentioned that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to strive in the last 10, meaning the last 10 nights, in a manner that he didn't strive in other than the last 10. We have another narration on Aisha radiallahu anha describing how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was when the last 10 were entered upon him. قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر شد مئزره وأحيا ليله وأيقظ أهله عائشة رضي الله عنها she mentioned that when the last ten would enter the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would tighten up his izar and he would spend his night in the worship of Allah and he would wake up his family to worship Allah. The scholar they mentioned the meaning of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tightening up his izar, meaning he would become more serious during the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And he would strive more in the last 10 nights of Ramadan as it related to the worship. 
And he would keep away from his wives. He would not enjoy them during these nights. Rather, he took the time to turn to his Lord and seek nearness to his Lord, leaving off that which Allah Azza wa Jal allowed for him and for the rest of the Ummah to enjoy during the nights of Ramadan, and that is fulfilling one's desires with one's lawful spouse. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in these last 10 nights, he busied himself and disconnected himself from the lawful worldly pleasures and delights, seeking that which is with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Also Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned that he spent his night in the worship meaning in the worship of Allah. Meaning he stood up during the night performing the acts of obedience. From prayer, recitation of the Quran, and other than that. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made his light, his night, to have life. He made his night to have life. So the word in here is Ahya Laylahu. He made his night alive. When what is meant meaning alive with worship. Because sleep is the brother of death. We know that when a person sleeps during the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the soul. So it is as if the individual is in a state of death at the time of sleeping. So with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spending his night worshipping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he made his night alive with ibadah. And this is the true life. Life worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just because an individual has a soul in his body, it doesn't mean that he's alive. For you have individuals who are walking around, but they're dead. Because their life is void of the iman, void of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's kufr, disbelief there, so the heart is dead. Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, Our man kana maytan, fa ahyaynahu wa ja'alna lahu nura, yamshi bihi fi nas, kaman mathaluhu fi dhulumat, laysa bi kharijan minha. Is the one who was dead, and then we gave life to him. And we gave him or made for him a light to walk with amongst the people. Is he similar to the one whose example is that of the individual who is in darkness who will not come out of it? So here Allah Azza wa Jal, He described the one who He has guided to Islam as being one who he has given life to. So if a person doesn't have Islam, that means what? He's dead. He's from amongst the walking dead. This is the real walking dead. Right? The real walking dead, those who are walking around, wa alaykum salam rahmatullah, with no guidance. Those who are walking around, and they do not know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No prayers, no fasting, no recitation of the Quran, no worship. But as for those who worship Allah, believe in Allah and His Messenger, 
minds of the ones their hearts are alive. Even to the point you may meet a Muslim who is a paraplegic, but he's full of life. And there's a brother, may Allah have mercy upon him, that many of the brothers they knew, he was paralyzed from his neck down. But he was alive. And any time you would go and see him, he's praising Allah. He's saying Alhamdulillah in all situations. And he did not allow his physical condition to cause him to fall into a state of despair. This is what we know of him. And we do not praise anyone over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is his reckoner. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made his night to be alive with worship. And he did not spend these nights sleeping most of the time. Also Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned وَأَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ And he woke his family up. Meaning he woke his family up to worship Allah also. And this is an important point that as men and leaders of our families, we have to be examples for them and a means of encouragement. And directing them in the right direction. For one should not only be concerned with saving himself, but a person should also be concerned with saving his family. As Allah Azza wa Jal He mentions, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O you who believe, Save yourselves and save your families from a fire. Wakuduha nasu wal hijara, a fire whose fuel is men and stones. So here we have the example of the Prophet وسلم, saving himself and also saving his family from a fire whose fuel is men and stones by spending these nights in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and waking up his family to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also this narration is an indication of the importance of ending one's affairs upon a good note. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالِ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ Indeed, actions are based upon how they end. Actions are based upon how they end. And there's a beautiful statement from Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Qayyim Al Jawziya Afwan, Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah, where he speaks about the point of benefit Al Ibra La bi Nuqsan Al Bidaya. That the point which is taken into consideration is not with the deficiency of the start or one start, but that which is taken into consideration is the completeness of one's ending. How do you end your affairs? So in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam striving in the last 10 nights of Ramadan 
is an indication of the importance of ending one's affairs on a good note. Perhaps an example that was given by the scholars can bring this point home of how a beautiful beginning has no value if the ending is not intact. A person, he stands up to pray, or prior to him standing up to pray, he makes wudu. He makes a good wudu. And then he enters into the prayer. And he's praying Salat al Isha. MashaAllah, the first raka, beautiful. Khushur. Humility, concentration, not allowing himself to be distracted by the shaitan. First raka done. Second raka, the same, if not better. The third raka, the same as the first two, if not better. The fourth raka'ah, ma sha Allah. Perfect. Except that right before he taslim, he passes gas. What happens to those raka'ah? First, second, and third, and the majority of the fourth. What happens to it? Does it count? No. Because something took place that wiped all of that out. Likewise, that can happen to you in life. Any one of us. We may go throughout life living upon the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing what's right, worshiping Allah, and then right at the end, you wipe everything out. And die in that state. So this is why Ibn Taymiyyah said. The point is not. The deficiency of the beginning. But the completeness of the ending. Because an individual can start off bad. A person accepted Islam. He struggled in, his, in the beginning of his Islam. Still was falling into affairs that were not befitting. He's a new Muslim. Struggling. He's, there's deficiency in his practice of Islam. But as the years go on, he gets stronger and he gets stronger and he gets stronger. And then when death comes to him, death comes to him while he's in a state of strength, in a state of obedience to Allah, and his ending is better than his beginning. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned, إِنَّمَا amal bil khawatim. Indeed, actions are based upon how they end. So we should strive in these last 10 days to end Ramadan upon a good note. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, إِنَّمَا abd." يُبْعَثُ عَلَى مَا مَاتَ عَلَيْهِ Indeed, the servant is resurrected upon what he died on. From the distinguishing features of the last ten nights of Ramadan, this is the time that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make i'tikaf. The time when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would seclude himself <coughs> in the masjid. We have the narration on the authority of Aisha radiallahu anha. 
كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يعتكف العشر الأواخر من رمضان حتى توفاه الله ثم اعتكف أزواجه من بعده Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to perform the i'tikaf in the last 10 nights of Ramadan until Allah took his soul. And then afterwards, his wives, they made i'tikaf in the masjid. Here, the statement of Aisha, كان النبي يعتكف Here's a language benefit for the brothers. When you find the word kana being used with a al-fi'l uh, al-mudari' the present tense verb, it gives the indication of something that was done on a continuous basis. Like Aisha radiallahu anha, she stated, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يذكر الله على كل أحيانه. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to remember Allah in all of his situations continuously. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was consistent in making اعتكاف in the last ten nights of Ramadan. And then she mentioned that his wives made i'tikaf after him, meaning after his death, which shows the permissibility of women making i'tikaf in the masjid, provided that there is no fitna and that they have the okay from those who are in charge of them and responsible for them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in making i'tikaf in the masjid he cut himself off from the outside world and secluded himself to the, mas to the masjid and he used to have a tent that he would go into and worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala therein and he would not leave the masjid Unless there was a reason for him to leave the masjid. So when a person is making i'tikaf in the masjid, the person is not to leave the masjid. You are to stay in the masjid when you are making i'tikaf. And as you find from the ulama, they state that there is no specific time limit as it relates to the i'tikaf. A person can do whatever he has the ability to do. So if you can only do one night out of, the, out of the ten nights, Alhamdulillah, you did itikaf for one night. If you can do itikaf for one hour, Alhamdulillah, you did itikaf for the hour. What's important <laughs> is the niyyah, the intention. The Prophet said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالِ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Indeed, the actions are based upon the intentions. We have the narration on the authority of Sufiya, the mother of the believers, radiallahu anha, قالت, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم معتكفا. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله. فأتيته أزوره ليلا. فحدثته ثم قمت لأنقلب أي لأنصرف إلى بيتي. فقام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم معي. Sophia radiallahu anha, she mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was making the seclusion in the masjid. And I came to visit him one night and I spoke to him. And then I got up to leave. Meaning, she got up to go to her home. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stood up with me, meaning... He escorted her to her home. So the Prophet left the masjid to escort his wife 
home. It's allowed to do this. The brother's making itikab here in the masjid. His wife comes as an example, and, she, and he lives on 57th Avenue. So he gets up and walks her around the corner. It's late. He walks her around the corner to make sure she gets home safe. This is allowed. This does not break the person's itikaf. In this same incident, when the Prophet ﷺ was walking his wife home, two companions seen him. And then he turned away and started walking away fast. And the Prophet, he said, Ala ruslikuma innaha sufiya bint huyayyid. He said, slow down. Indeed, this is Sophia, the daughter of Huyayyid. I mean, this is my wife. So they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we will never think evil of you. And the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that he hated for shaitan to put something into their hearts. He hated for shaitan to put something into their hearts. Who can give me a tremendous benefit from that situation, the end situation? We already covered the permissibility of leaving the masjid when one is performing itikaf for a benefit. And it doesn't break the itikaf. Another benefit, when there is a possibility of there being doubt, then one should give clarification to remove the doubts and speculation. One more benefit. And not that there's only one more left, but one more great benefit. The Prophet said he hated for shaitan to do what? And when did this take place? Huh? Ahsan. It took place in Ramadan. Which establishes that not all of the shayateen are locked up. Or, as some of the ulama they mention, yes, they are locked up, but they still have the ability to whisper. When a person is making the itikaf, it's not allowed for an individual to have relations with his family, nor to indulge in foreplay or anything that can lead to having relations. So that means no kissing on your wives, no touching them with desires. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ And do not engage them while you are secluding yourself in the masjid. Meaning that don't engage in any type of uh, intimate behavior with your wives while you are supposed to be in the masjid focusing on worship. Because this goes against what itikaf is about. Itikaf is about Separating yourself from the worldly pleasures, like having relations with your lawful spouses, sacrificing that for seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars say, if a portion of your body goes out of the masjid, then this doesn't break the itikaf. As we have the narration of Aisha radiallahu anha, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يخرج رأسه من المسجد وهو معتكف فأغسله وأنا حائض. 
وفي رواية كانت ترجل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهي حائض وهو معتكف في المسجد وهي في هجرتها يناولها رأسه The first narration Aisha رضي الله عنها she mentioned that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to stick his head out of the masjid while he was making i'tikaf and I would wash his hair while I was menstruating. Another narration states that Aisha used to like comb the hair of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while she was menstruating and he was making i'tikaf in the masjid and she was in her apartment and he would stick his head out to her. Pay attention to the brother, open the office. The Prophet's house was similar to this. That his, the door to his house was connected to the masjid. So the Prophet وسلم, would be in the masjid, his body, where his head would be inside of his house like this. So as his head is in the house, we can stand up and look. Aisha, she is washing his hair and combing his hair. His head is in the house, his body is in the masjid. He's still in Irtikaf. Also, it mentions that she was menstruating while doing this, which shows that Islam is a balanced way of life. We're not like the Jews. Because when their women menstruate, what happens? No interaction with them whatsoever. Even to the point that sometimes they have to observe their monthly cycles in another place, separate from the husband. This is extremism. And then you have, from amongst the Christians, those who are extremely negligent to the point that they have relations with their wives and their women folk while they are on their monthly cycles. We are Ahl Islam, we are in the middle. We don't have relations with our wives during their monthly cycles, but at the same time, we do not abandon them totally. We just abandon having relations with them, but we eat with them. We sleep with them. It's allowed for a man to kiss his wife while she's on her monthly cycle. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at times would have foreplay with his spouses while they were on their monthly cycles, but he would cover their lower parts of the body up with a waist uh, wrap, and then he would enjoy them from the waist up. And this is all a part of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Aisha was menstruating and she would comb his hair, which shows that a woman who is menstruating, her hand is not nudges. Her hand is not impure. The impurity is only in the blood. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once told Aisha to go into the masjid and get his prayer mat out of the masjid. And she said, oh Messenger of Allah, I'm menstruating. He said, your menses is not in your hands. Everyone understand this? Yes. Your menses is not in your hands. Meaning you're pure. Go in the masjid. Bring me my prayer mat. So the scholars, they mentioned, as it relates to leaving the masjid, with one's entire body, then this is divided into three categories. The first category, Al-Khuruj li Amrin la bud minhu. Tab'an aw shar'an. Kalqadai hajit al bawl wal ghaib wal wudu al wajib wal ghusl al wajib li janabatin aw ghayriha wal akl wal shurb. Fahada jaiz. إذا لم يمكن فعله في المسجد فإن أمكن فعله في المسجد فلا The first category of leaving the masjid is for a matter that is a must whether it is a matter that is connected to one's natural situation or a legislated matter like a person leaving the masjid going to relieve himself from urine or defecation or a person leaving the masjid to make the obligatory wudu. Or a person leaving the masjid to make the obligatory ghusl for the major impurity or other than that. 
or a person leaves the masjid to go to eat and to drink. All of this is permissible if the person does not have the ability to do it within the masjid. And this is why we say that for those of you who are making an itikab here, we are here at your service. So you don't have to leave the masjid unnecessarily. Whatever you need, let us know. We're here to accommodate the people here making the itikab so that you can focus on your ibadah. So if the person does not have the ability to do these things in the masjid, then it is permissible for him to leave the masjid. But if he has the ability to do them in the masjid, then he should not leave the masjid. As an example, if there are like showers or bathrooms connected to the masjid, then he goes and he fulfills his need there. Or the food and the drink is there in the masjid, then there's no need for him to go out for food and drink when there's food and drink in the masjid. Also, the second category, Al-Khuruj Li Amrin. Or Al-Khuruj Li Amri Ta'a. La Tajim Ali. Leaving the masjid for a matter of obedience to Allah, which is not obligatory upon the person. Like going to visit a sick person, or going to a janazah prayer, and the likes of this. لا يفعله إلا أن نشترط ذلك ابتداء اعتكافه. This is not the person should not leave for these reasons unless he made it a condition at the beginning of his اعتكاف. Except if an individual he made it a condition and stated that there is a sick person that he must visit. But this was present at the beginning of his itikaf. So for him to leave for that reason, there's no harm in that. The third matter, al-khuruj li amrin yunafi al-itikaf. Kal-khuruj lil bay' wa shira wa jima' ahlihi wa mubashiratihim wa nahwi dhalik. Fala yaf'aluhu bi shartin wa la bi ghayri shart. لأنه يناقض الاعتكاف وينافي المقصود منه. The third category is when a person leaves the masjid for a matter that negates the i'tikaf, like a person goes out for the purpose of buying and selling, or a person leaves the masjid to go home to have relations with his wife or to have some type of intimate uh, interaction with his wife or the likes of that. The person is not to do that, whether he made it a condition in the beginning or he did not make it a condition, because this nullifies the i'tikaf and negates the aim and the goal of i'tikaf. And the reason why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made i'tikaf in the last ten nights of Ramadan is because he was searching for Laylatul Qadr, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned. تحروا ليلة القدر في الوتر من العشر الأواخر من رمضان. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said search for the night of decree during the odd nights from the last ten of Ramadan. So this is why these last ten nights are extremely important, and that is due to. Us searching for Laylatul Qadr. Are there any questions regarding that which has been covered? Or anything connected to the night prayer or these last ten nights? Jazakumullah khairin wa subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubirik.